Sustainable fashion is a hot topic now, but it's commonly misunderstood. There are several different angles to approach it from, and oftentimes people focus on one angle, but not the others. In this video, I'll talk about the four main pillars of sustainable fashion and debunk nine common myths and mistakes that you might be making. If you're new here, my name is Lily, and I blog about sustainability, running, and travel over at imperfectidealist.com. This channel is mostly about sustainability, so if that's something you care about, I hope you'll stick around. Before I dive in, I want to first clarify what sustainable fashion actually is. The way I see it, sustainable fashion focuses on four main aspects. Number one, the place of purchase. Ask yourself, can I buy this piece used or from a sustainable brand? Can I rent the piece if I only need it for an event? Number two, the production of clothing. Were the workers treated fairly and paid a living wage? Does the production process use resources efficiently, avoid hazardous chemicals, and mistreatment of animals? Number three, the actual clothing. Is the material high quality and made to last? Are the materials environmentally friendly and biodegradable? Do they use animal products in the clothing, like leather or fur? And finally, number four, are consumption habits. Do I actually need this piece? And will I wear it regularly for many years? There is a whole host of other factors in sustainability, but these are some of the main questions I encourage you to ask yourself before buying a piece. Now let's get into those myths and misconceptions. Number one, quitting fast fashion will take away jobs in developing countries. A common defense of fast fashion is that it provides jobs to garment workers. This is also a common type of argument people make when it comes to veganism and vegetarianism. If everyone stops eating meat, they wonder what will happen to all the cows and all the chickens. I think some people mean well when they make this defense, but it's just logically unsound and it has undertones of saviorism. If everyone quit fast fashion at the same time, sure, it would be an economic disaster, but that's a totally unrealistic scenario. It takes time to transform an industry and to change people's hearts and minds. Also, the jobs provided are usually hazardous and low paying. An example of this is the 2013 Rana Plaza disaster, where a factory building in Bangladesh collapsed and killed over 1,100 workers and injured thousands more. You can learn more about the human impact of the fashion industry in the documentary, The True Cost, which is free to watch with ads on Tubi. The 2020 pandemic also led to many brands canceling orders from factories, leaving garment workers without pay. There was a movement for brands to pay up, but several still haven't paid. I see you Forever 21, Primark, Urban Outfitters, Free People, and Anthropology. It's clear that the fast fashion industry pays no regard to human life. These are not the kinds of jobs we should be defending. Some may say that this is the best job garment workers can get in their countries, but why not try to improve those conditions rather than just accept them? If we could get ethical fashion to overtake fast fashion, garment workers could actually have humane working conditions and a living wage. Number two, you have to get rid of your fast fashion when transitioning to a sustainable wardrobe. This is totally counterintuitive. If you like certain fast fashion pieces and wear them regularly, you should keep them. Sustainable fashion isn't really about what brands are in your wardrobe. It's more about your mindset and habits. It's more sustainable to keep your old fast fashion and wear it than to get rid of it and buy new clothes from sustainable brands. I personally still wear a couple old fast fashion pieces. That said, if you don't really wear the clothes anymore, like you haven't worn it in six months, then you should consider getting rid of it but responsibly, which we'll talk about later. Number three, fast fashion can't be sustainable. This one might have you scratching your heads. How can fast fashion possibly be sustainable? While the production of fast fashion may not be sustainable, you can try to make your fast fashion pieces last a long time and only buy what you will regularly wear. If your clothing breaks, consider mending it, using it as cleaning rags, or finding a clothing recycling program. This doesn't address the labor issues of fast fashion, but it does address the main other problem, the general waste the industry produces. Fast fashion encourages us to buy cheap, trendy pieces that are made to only last a season. After that, the clothing might break or go out of style, and it often sits unworn at the bottom of our closets, which is a waste of resources. Fast fashion is the only option for some people due to affordability, sizing, or lack of access to secondhand shops. If this is the case for you, buying pieces you will actually wear and try to keep for a long time is still a way to participate in the sustainable fashion movement. Number four, you don't have to worry about sustainable fashion if you donate your clothes. Donating or recycling your clothes is fine, but many people use it as a way to justify overconsumption. And the truth is that only 20% of clothes donated to thrift stores is actually sold. The rest is thrown away or sold to developing countries where it puts local textile workers out of jobs. Buying and donating is still consuming. That's why it's important to really think about each of your purchases and whether you'll be using it in the long run. 
And when you do need to let go of old pieces, there are other ways to get rid of clothes more responsibly, including selling or giving them away online, upcycling or downcycling, or bringing them to a consignment shop. Number five, you have to be rich to afford sustainable fashion. This is probably one of the biggest misconceptions out there. Yes, sustainable brands are more expensive than fast fashion, but buying from sustainable brands isn't the only option there is. Before buying new, even from an ethical brand, consider looking for what you need secondhand. Thrift stores, eBay, and apps like Poshmark and ThreadUp make it a lot easier to find used clothing at a more affordable price. I do have a Poshmark referral link to save you some money, so if you need something and want to try to find a secondhand, it'll be in the description box. While I try to be a conscious fashion consumer, I personally have never actually bought from a sustainable brand yet, simply because I'd rather go digging in thrift stores and pay less or not buy at all. I will admit though that I have caved and made purchases from a less ethical brand if I did need a functional piece in a short amount of time and on a budget. Still, I've been able to find many staple items secondhand from running shoes to professional clothes and everything in between. If you do need to buy new and want to go through an ethical brand, there are ways to budget to make the purchase more affordable. First, only purchase the clothes you really need. Buying less will help you save money. You might also cut back in other areas of your life that aren't that important to you. Personally, I hate going out for drinks because that stuff is so expensive in the US. By prioritizing things you care about, you might find that you have more wiggle room in your budget. Number six, buying from sustainable brands should be your only concern. One of the earlier misconceptions was that fast fashion couldn't be made more sustainable. The reverse is also true. Sustainable fashion can actually be unsustainable depending on your habits. If you buy a ton of clothes you don't actually need and won't wear regularly, you're still overconsuming, even if you buy from ethical brands. Those clothes are still the product of resources and labor that weren't efficiently used. This is why I absolutely hate those massive sustainable fashion hauls, as that's antithetical to the whole idea behind sustainable fashion. Basically, sustainability is a mindset. It's not only about the production of the piece, but also our consumption habits. Number seven, brands that claim to be ethical are actually ethical. On a similar note, some ethical brands might not be as ethical as you think. Sustainability is a marketing tactic now, and some businesses use that to take advantage of well-meaning consumers. This is known as greenwashing. Before shelling out your hard-earned money on clothing that claims to be sustainable, do your research. Good On You has a directory of thousands of brands that they've investigated and rated for the following categories, planet, people, and animals. I also have a post and a video on how to tell if a brand is sustainable or greenwashing where you can learn more about ways to assess a brand's sustainability. One of the biggest supposedly sustainable brands is Everlane. Many slow fashion bloggers love and support Everlane, but it's actually rated not good enough on Good On You. This is because there's no evidence it pays its workers a living wage, minimizes textile waste, or implements water reduction initiatives and in production. During the pandemic, it also laid off its customer service team without warning after having reassured everyone that there would be no layoffs. And furthermore, former BIPOC employees have criticized Everlane for its discriminatory work culture. I'm not trying to call out or shame people who like Everlane. I just want to call out Everlane for not being as radically transparent and sustainable as it claims to be. Of course, Everlane is probably better than a fast fashion brand, but I know that I personally wouldn't want to pay such a high price for clothes that aren't proven to be ethical, especially given Everlane's misleading branding as such a sustainable company. If you want to learn more about Everlane and why it's not as eco-friendly as many people believe, I have a whole post on it and I probably will make a video at some point. Number eight, buying from thrift stores takes away clothes from the poor. Some people are hesitant to thrift because they think they're taking away clothes from people who can't afford new items. I mentioned earlier though that only 20% of clothes donated to thrift stores actually get sold. Most of that clothing that isn't sold is still good and wearable. If anything, we need more people to thrift and for people to consume less so there's not so much donated clothing. Keep in mind that most thrift stores aren't the charities themselves either. Most charities have thrift stores to make money for their programs, so if you're thrifting, you're actually supporting good causes. Of course, it's important to be aware of the rising thrift prices and do what we can to help these lower income communities. The gentrification of thrifting has been a super hot topic, but I don't think the rising prices are the fault of thrifters or resellers. Given the huge excess of clothing, I think we should look more at inflation and corporate greed for the rising prices. Goodwill, for instance, paid its workers with disabilities sometimes less than a dollar an hour, all while its CEO made 730k in 2018. It's pretty gross. 
While I don't think these rising prices are the fault of individuals, there are still some things you can do to be especially mindful while thrifting. A few things I recommend are avoiding overconsumption, only buy what you need and think you'll wear regularly. This helps ensure that we're not stuck in this mindset of high turnover disposable fashion. This is something I struggle with sometimes at thrift stores as some items are too cheap and too cute to resist, even if I'm not sure how I'll wear it. But try to be honest with yourself about whether you will actually wear something. If you're going to resell, try to avoid buying a ton of high need items and low stock. This might be things like plus size clothing, professional clothes, winter clothes, or kids clothes. In some stores though, these might be in abundance. It really depends, so feel free to ask the manager. To be clear, I really don't think reselling is problematic in general. I actually think there are a lot of benefits, like making secondhand clothing more accessible to those who can't physically go to the stores. But that said, I think there are still some things to be mindful of. When donating clothes, try to choose smaller local orgs that you know are doing good in your community, like homeless shelters or free clothing charities. This can help the people who are struggling with the higher thrift store prices. And if you're interested in diving into this topic more, I have a monster post and video about the gentrification and the ethics of thrifting and reselling. And finally, number nine, thrift stores are 100% ethical. This last misconception really just illustrates how freaking tough it is to live 100% ethically. It's impossible. Thrift stores are not totally ethical, especially corporate ones. Like I mentioned earlier, Goodwill sometimes pays their workers with disabilities sometimes less than a dollar an hour, all while its executives enjoy cushy six-figure salaries. Salvation Army is also known for being hostile to the LGBTQ plus community. If you're looking at it from an environmental's perspective, thrifting is still better than buying new, even from a sustainable company, as you're simply buying what already exists. There's no need for extra labor and resources to make clothing. But that said, if you want to thrift as ethically as possible, try to avoid corporate thrift stores and go for local ones instead. I know this is hard and I've still needed to go to Goodwill occasionally, so that's why I said try. You can also research thrift stores connected with charities to be sure that their profits actually go to good causes. One that I think is cool is Out of the Closet, which funds AIDS healthcare foundations, HIV slash AIDS programs, and their new housing services, as well as on-site pharmacies and free HIV testing. I hope you learned something new from this video and that you have a better idea of ways to be a more conscious consumer. I want to reiterate that it's impossible to be 100% sustainable and that it's okay to make slip ups every now and then. All that matters is that you try to do what you can and try to improve on what you're already doing. Let me know what your sustainable fashion goals are and what common misconceptions you've observed that I missed. If you want the text version of this video, it'll be linked below. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.